Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think many people realize that the Clinton campaign is now helping John Durham and the Durham Pro Special Counsel convict Michael Sussman of lying to James Baker at the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Only in American politics, or I should say only within the world of democratic politics, could there be a situation where the Clinton campaign and the Democratic Party hired Michael Sussman in 2016. And in 2016, they had him compile a whole bunch of information from surveillance of Trump, his tower, the executive office of the presidency, his apartment, and also a health care provider, weave and, and, and twist that data into some kind of story where he's secretly communicating with a bank and have, and, and by the way, a lot of it was user-created according to government agencies, and have an attorney, Michael Sussman, text James Baker at the Federal Bureau of Investigation, I'm coming on my own, I'm not coming on anyone's behalf, while he's billing, by the way, Madam Secretary. So she's paying him to go infiltrate a government agency with lies and absurd allegations about Trump, her direct political rival, to get that government agency to investigate Donald Trump, an incoming, an, in, an incoming president, or a candidate at that time. Does that make any sense to you? But now you have Robbie Mook and Mark Elias, two people who, two people who literally worked with Clinton. They are now testifying, or they have testified, against Michael Sussman, who worked at the same law firm that not only spread, that helped create the Alpha Bank narrative, which was quickly debunked by the Bureau, but purchased the Steele dossier, which was absurd nonsense, and also, in addition to all of that, outsourced a, a third-party tech firm to look at DNC servers, and the U.S. government never looked at DNC servers. That's a fact. We are now trusting, we have trusted, the, our government and journalists around the country have trusted the third-party tech firm that was outsourced by the law firm Sussman and Elias worked for regarding it being infiltrated by another country to inform us that Bernie Sanders was cheated, thus forcing Debbie Wasserman Schultz to resign. And now you have Robbie Mook and Mark Elias, two of the most important people in Clinton's campaign in 2016, turning against Michael Sussman and testifying for the Durham Probe Special Counsel, which is their to prove tr uh, Trump right about everything he stated. He was set up and framed. We're, we're, we're now finding that out, and the Clinton campaign is more than happy to actually say, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. We hired Sussman. <laughs> and he, had to, he, he actually lied to, my, uh, to James Baker, Comey's legal counsel at the Bureau. It's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah. We're the Democrats. We're, we're actually working with the Durham Probe Special Counsel. Who knows why? Probably to ensure they don't get indicted in the future. But hit subscribe to this channel. We're over 197,000 subscribers it's because of you. You are awesome. I can't thank you enough. I have the best subs, the best comment section. We had an amazing live stream uh, last night. We might have one tonight, but we'll definitely have one at least tonight or Monday night. Hit subscribe. I have a segment up right now on the Bitcoin crash to 10,000 or below channel. I'm very passionate, not because I want it to happen, but because the crypto world is going to absolutely implode. It's never seen 8 to 9% inflation with a recession and, and increase and interest rates rising. It's never seen that before. So when, when veterans of the, the Bitcoin and crypto universe say, oh, you know what? We've seen it go up and down. You've never seen companies like Tether and Coinbase go bankrupt, which is unfortunately what's going to happen because many of these companies are just basic Ponzi schemes. 
I explained that in the Bitcoin crash to 10,000 or below, it'll get to 10,000, def- probably be- almost certainly below that. The Dow Jones will get to below 25,000. And I have a stock market crash channel where I explain that. Hit subscribe to both channels. Subscribe to this channel. If you want to support my work, my Patreon is below in the pinned comment, ladies and gentlemen. Your support is greatly appreciated. A member, if you want to become a member of this channel, just, it, we have a great community here. Become a member. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to give a super thanks, the super thanks is below, right next to the like and the share buttons. But word of mouth is the best thing ever. I mean, tell your friends. I, mean, I have been telling you the market's going to tank since October of last year and that Bitcoin's going to crash and crypto is going to crash since uh, since September of last year. Actually, since September of last year, I told you we're heading into a recession. The market's going to crash. I mean, everything that I've been saying, unfortunately, has been happening. But ladies and gentlemen, the adults were in charge when they were trying to set up and frame Trump. The adults are in charge. Now we have 40-year high in inflation, gas prices, energy prices through the roof, commodities at all-time highs. Gee, what happened two years ago? Oh, yeah, that's right. Maniacs said we should end economic activity. Hmm, how did that work out? $10 trillion pumped into the economy. And you'd think from the philosophy of crypto, like the ideology behind cryptocurrencies, well, if the central banks pump and, and print money, obviously crypto is going to be more attractive. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And I explain why in the Bitcoin crash to 10,000 or below channel. But former Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook says Clinton... Ag- agreed to give uh, Trump Russia material to reporter CBS News. CNN, Hillary Clinton, personally approved plan to share Trump allegations with press. Politico, Clinton 2016 campaign manager. Um, so, okay, uh, Michael said, did attorneys put Robbie Mook on the witness stand? Yes, they did. Hillary okayed uh, sharing uh, Trump data, campaign manager says. So he basically threw Madam Secretary his former boss under the bus. And he did so because he's siding with the Durham probe special counsel because people like Robbie Mook and people, especially people like Mark Elias who purchased the steel dossier, they know that they're in legal jeopardy. 18 U S code 371 is the statute. I wrote about this in the federalist to read my writing in the Hill, the Huffington post salon, the Jerusalem post, the federalist, other publications, the Times of Israel, other publications, go to hagoodman.com. You could see when I said in, during segments on YouTube five, six years ago where I said Clinton will lose to Trump. And she did. Six years ago now. Six, seven years ago. So six years ago. And so, I mean, it, it's like you have the Clinton campaign, the Democratic Party, Teaming with the Durham Probe Special Counsel. I mean, the conviction is almost certain. I'm unless there. Look, here's the caveat. I'm telling you that a conviction is almost certain. Here's the caveat: if the D.C. jurors, if the jury has too many people who are just vote blue no matter who, it ain't going to happen. But other than that, I mean, there are a lot of people who will look at the judge and say, "Okay, you know, they, they, there are certain people out there who love being on juries." I'm definitely not one of them. I'm sure you're not one of them either. But there are some people who just love being on juries. So even those people, they'll, they'll, they will, you know, that's the type of person who, like, who will, like, convict his grandma or, like, you know, his best friend or brother or whatever. Again, that's, there's a certain type of person who, like, and so it doesn't matter if the D.C., it doesn't matter if, if, you say, oh, there's there's people on the jury who gave to Clinton. It's like, yeah, but there's certain types of people who really enjoy that. Like, they they enjoy serving on a jury. I couldn't think of a worse fate, but there are people who like it. So, just because somebody gave to the Democratic Party or just because, um, you know, they voted for, for President Obama, or I don't know how many people on that jury, about two or three, it only takes one for a hung jury or a mistrial. A hung jury or a mistrial. But he's not going to get acquitted. There's too much evidence. He texted, I'm not going on behalf of anyone else, and he billed the Clinton campaign. So the, the evidence is there. And then you have Robbie Mook and Mark Elias throwing him under the bus also. So, I mean, the evidence is there. 
if everything goes well and the, and the jury does its job, he's going to get convicted. I, I Again, I'm giving the caveat because, like, if it doesn't happen because of some, like, bizarre occurrence with the jury and it's D.C., I don't want anybody to say, you said that it would happen. It's like, well, okay, God, it's politics. And so what should happen sometimes doesn't happen because, you know, some bizarre coincidence that always favors the Democratic Party. Isn't that interesting? So when the foundation gets millions and then President Obama doesn't veto the sale of uranium to you-know-who, it was a coincidence. I mean, everything seems to just, you know, fall in place for Democrats. Gee, I wonder how that happened. But anyway, um, there are too many forces at play or too many too many people testifying against Sussman. He probably should testify at this point. I mean, really, Sussman should testify. And he should say, look, James Baker knew I was coming on behalf of Clinton, which is the truth. That's another thing. That's another thing, ladies and gentlemen. That's the truth. If Sussman gets either acquitted or is a mistrial hung jury, it's because he's actually telling the truth. So he lied via text message, and he billed uh, the Democratic campaign, but he is telling the truth. Um, the Bureau didn't care that Democrats were giving them derogatory information on Trump. They just needed a pretext to investigate Trump. They were political. They were partisan. Democrats love to think that everything that took place with an outgoing Democratic administration was completely apolitical. And everything that happens in Trump's administration is him going after his direct political rivals. So an ellipsis means that he was trying to pressure another country to investigate pure as the driven snow mashed potato brains after mashed potato brains literally says you're not getting a billion. Hey, hey, man, come on now. You have the vice president boasting that he wi- he withheld a billion dollars, and that was, and still you have journalists saying, oh, you know, that prosecutor was corrupt. It's like, well, maybe that's not the only person that was corrupt. And <laughs> within this country or that country. And uh, sorry, it's not U.S. foreign policy to force out government officials. Please tell me. I would love to ask anyone at the New York Times or the Washington Post or anywhere, the Atlantic especially, who's a part of this also, these are all like Democratic Party newsletters. When was the last time a government, a U.S. government official forced out a government official of another country? I would love to know. And, and, and had a son working for a, a corrupt energy company within that country. When was the last time that took place? Even Marie Ivanovich was told... Marie Ivanovich was told to uh, refer any conflicts of interest to vice, the vice president. <laughs> so they're not even hiding the fact that, that there are endless conflicts of interest. But again, Democrats can have endless conflicts of interest. Republicans cannot. Trump was investigated based on a Comey memo and a dossier, both of which were not based on any reality. Comey's recollections pertaining to his meeting with Trump are completely meaningless and could have been fabricated easily. They would have said Rudy Giuliani's recollection or, you know, if he memorialized something, they wouldn't have believed it. And, um, or an FBI official loyal to Trump, they would be like, oh, anybody, see, this is the thing. The media, the Democratic Party, they don't have, like, some kind of set value system. They change their tune every two seconds. So, it's like, they keep saying, oh, another country infiltrated the DNC emails. At the same time, they're actually getting a steel dossier with help from Russian sources. So they have no problem with a steel dossier that said that Trump did you-know-what in a, in, a, in a Moscow hotel room, but they have a lot of problems with oh, the emails showing that Bernie Sanders was cheated and, and forcing Debbie Wasserman Schultz to resign, and you still have people in denial. Well, we don't know that they tipped the scales. Well, genius, then why did Debbie Wasserman Schultz resign? 
and then work for Madam Secretary. Hmm? Even Elizabeth Warren said Bernie was cheated. Then she ran against him and then said that he... <laughs> that he... <laughs> and then spread gossip about him. Thanks, Lizzie. Thanks a lot. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Be on, Go to the uh, Stock Market Crash channel right now and go to the Bitcoin Crash uh, to 10,000 or below channel right now. Ladies and gentlemen, hit subscribe. I'll be back in about two hours. Have a fantastic Sunday, people. Tell your friends about this channel. Ladies and gentlemen, how many people in YouTube, uh, if you've lasted this long, how many people in all of YouTube have been telling you since September of 2021 that the market is going to crash? And how many people have been published in the Federalist telling the world? I am the only per one of the few people in all of you, one of the few people, there have been others, but I'm one of the few people, maybe a handful of people in all of YouTube since September of 2021 telling the whole world that the market's going to crash. Tell your friends about this channel, about my prediction pertaining to the market. And like I said, it's only going to get worse, unfortunately. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe.